I think so many of you out there, you're existing in your peasant life. You wake up when the alarm goes off. You go to your job. <laughs> Hi, boss. What is going on guys? Hey, welcome back to my show. This is Hire a Bunch of Fire Bunches and my name is Rom. And I'm back to the game with dressed up and all all image reviewed. <laughs> yep, well you see my freshen out and uh my uh my avatar I changed it, my 3D model all changed and I think the motion capture is still working alright, yeah. Um, today's we I'm um, gonna share up my reaction, my analysts, and also tips, takeaways from the most, the very most recent interview from Candace Owens versus Andrew Tate, the top G. Whatever you call him, no comments, no uh, uh, prejudice, no uh, no judgments. Whatever you call him, just like. <laughs> It's another long, really long interview, man. It's like three hours or something. Um, but um, I picked up two questions I think are really important for you guys as you are preparing your interview so we can share my thoughts and experience on this. Um, so long for sure. So I think the first one I want to talk about is... Um, he was asked question uh, how he have been transformed from what he was from 10 years ago. This question is actually um, kind of similar to the question that I reviewed with you guys. You know, tell me about your experience and also can you share a experience that you learned something or what have you been doing? What have you done? What have you achieved? achievement to prove that you can do some some qualifications about this job right but for Andrew Tate Owens are asking is asking okay uh what have you done to transform to be who you are from what you were a couple years ago right so let's see how how he said uh first of all, all right, let's just jump right into this Andrew Tate. Long time. I know it's been a very long time. All right, actually, welcome I you guys. So this question we we'll have is on the mark three minutes and forty seconds. Um, cameras in my face ten years ago. Yep. You somehow did. Um, so I think it's a bit unfair. I also think that some of the critique that is coming your way is coming from people who are well intentioned, like they actually mm -hmm. don't perceive maybe perhaps, okay, this is 10 years ago, what the context is, has yeah. he changed since? So I will ask the question and we are going to get into some of those clips you said you're an open book. Yeah. How have you transformed? And I, I've seen changes just, I think in the last five years. Yep. Who oh, I'm sorry. Last five years. How have you transformed? What did you do? What have you achieved? Right? Question like that you today how have you transformed that's a very good question it's also very important when you talk about candace from 10 years ago the idea that you did something 10 years ago which you would no longer agree with is one thing but the second thing to i to come along to the conclusion that you now have no value to add to the world would be massively unfair right everybody changes and that's fine i'm not mm -hmm. the kind of person who's going to sit and apologize for his past i believe all's well that ends well i believe we're humans and we grow and we learn i'd be a fool and i'd be disingenuous to sit here and pretend i was sorry for something i did in the past remember we had a question uh tell me about yourself no i'm sorry what how would you see yourself in the next 10 years? Okay, so the way Andrew Tate said is a upverse, a reverse way. You know, it's like a reverse answer to how, how do you see yourself? Okay, how do you see yourself in the past 10 years? And the way he answered is, when we answer the question about future, we said, usually we started with lines like, okay, nobody can, can predict the future. But the way for this question, Andrew Tate answered is, okay, I never regret who I were. And uh, something like, oh, um, nobody I want to admit, admit that who you were or what you've done like five or ten years ago. Nobody really cares. But people focus on the present, right? Yeah, we can start something like that when you ask the similar question. And let's begin. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be very honest to everyone at home. I've talked at honest. for a very long time about my history and the fact I used to run a webcam business. And I sure. don't feel guilty for that. I know that's maybe what they want from me. I don't feel sorry for that. I've never hurt anybody. Convincing. That's nothing to do with my current criminal case. Everybody right. who worked for me was very positive. In fact, my 
number one supporters currently online and my best lifelong friends and some of the letters I got in jail were from people who worked for me at that time. And I had a business. And I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend that I feel guilty or I feel sorry for that. I'm from a low-income background. I did what I had to do to survive. And truthfully, all Probably in all, changed. being very honest, I don't think what I did was really that bad. And I want to say that. And I know people are going to lose That's their minds. very it, confident. I didn't tell drugs. I didn't kill anybody. I mean, what did I do? I, I found a gap in the market and I helped some people organize some accounts oh, on the internet website. How That's he what succeeded. I did. And they're going to try and criticize me and crucify me for the next hundred years because of it, because of clips that were made okay. 10 years ago. I think it's disingenuous and I don't think anyone actually really cares about the virtue of it because nobody who was involved in my life back then is complaining about anything. I think it's just an attack on me. And certainly we learn and we grow and we change, but it's very interesting how hypocritical the idea of looking at somebody's life over such a long period actually is. I mean, we can look at Donald Trump, right? Who I'm a fan of, I guess you're. Okay. He's, he's giving an example of Donald Trump. I know you've had your ups and downs with him, but in the conservative sphere, ups he's pretty downs. well respected. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump used to own the Miss Universe pageant. Are we going to criticize him? Are we going to crucify him? What about the girls he had in Miss Universe who decided to go on and do Playboy magazine? Is he a bad person now? Why? Now, that's not Christian values, right? People are messy and life is messy and nothing is completely clean. And this idea that you're going to find somebody and 10 or 11 years ago, they did something which might even be slightly distasteful, not even illegal. Mm -hmm. And you're going to crucify him forever. I just don't believe that's genuine virtue. I think it's just an attack. Okay, so all right, interesting. Um, so the way the way he pushes his answer uh, strategies is uh, first of all, uh, you know, like I said, he posted a line. Oh, nobody really uh, care or uh, focus on what you what you did or what have you done or who you were like five, ten, twenty years ago, such a long period. And then and then he said, um, uh, however, I did for transforming myself is i being proactive won't sit around but in the meantime i've very i've been very confident who i am and what i have been doing so in in the sense of uh if you've been asked the similar question in interview you know you can start similar line yeah um i haven't done such and such a things to add value to myself but at the meantime i focusing at the present not sitting around but in the meantime being proactive to get more competent for my career and uh, for the next job okay and <laughs> when he talked about donald trump i did actually uh did a research about uh trump's expertise or this it could experience because tate was talking about trump used to own Uni miss universe and yes he did um i think he owned it until 2015 well he sold the uh the organization or business to somebody else yeah and that's ever so far so that's a legit i thought it was just a <laughs> non-relevant topic but yeah that's legit um so in the response to that you know i have been doing some content for that so basically uh videos like uh how do you see yourself no no um how do you fix the conflicts you know critics criticize or conflicts in your workplace video cards right there right so in the meantime my other video like myself yeah how 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 did i crowding out from the uh life experience of being laid off for multiple months almost one year two years and how my succeed to do that so check video for those all right all right second question um i think tate was asked about how have you come from nothing uh, the backgrounds nothing to something that people are looking up some people are looking up right now i i have no comments for his life experience like i said this is just sharing experience analysis and reaction to interview all right so We'll see how he answer that. Uh, let's get the mark. 10 minutes. Yeah, right there. Okay. So the question might be a little bit long because Kansas put a lot of wording to the question itself, but we'll see. Pray for it. I don't see why I should be. Okay. So the way that I read you, and you can definitely let me know if I'm wrong, obviously, because you are you, mm -hmm. is that people that don't come from a lot, me and you, yeah. obviously, um, mm -hmm obviously have different decisions that lay before us in life than people that come from everything or people that come from a very stable household, two right, loving right, parents. Right, right. Um, and this kind of gets into the dilemma. I remember years ago, Tommy Laren had said something. She's a political commentator in the US had said something to the effect of, well, you know, Jay-Z used to sell crack and he sort of laughed. And he probably did. Oh, and he man. did. And he sort of laughed this off. And 
I remember looking at that because I looked up to Jay-Z's music so much, yeah. you know, and I looked up to him because it made it possible for me to change my circumstances. So you're looking at this guy yeah. who comes from nothing. He came from the projects. He sold drugs. And then he does, doesn't have to sell drugs anymore. And he's now talking about ideas and talking about business. So I was able to more closely understand and go, okay, I can actually climb out of these circumstances, even though I didn't, wasn't born, you know, with a ton of wealth and a lot of opportunities that some, like some people were. Yeah. And I think it's very difficult for people that mm -hmm. don't come from nothing to understand that. And they're so sure that if they were in desperate circumstances, that they would still never do anything. But this is their massive mistake. And you're right, but this is their massive mistake. All right. So Tate kind of cut the question out but basically candace is trying to ask how have you done what qualify you for who you are today or what becomes to who you are today that you deserve a lot of people's following or are you influencing a lot of people and take kind of cut that question because that's too much wording and let's see how we answer that the reason I have such huge affinity with the youth of the world today, right. especially the masculine youth, is one, because a lot of them are disenfranchised, which is one conversation. But two, also, the reason my reach is so global, the reason I have so many fans in Slovenia and Southside Chicago, and I've, been, I've had kids from Ulaanbaatar come up to me, Mongolia, all, all around right. the world, is because I speak to the disenfranchised, and part of that is always going to be, or is going to involve, financially disenfranchised. I'm, I'm someone who comes done. from absolutely nothing and made himself into something. Right. And unfortunately, there's a rocky road sometimes, like you just described with Jay-Z, to get that done. But if I would have been born into a perfect family, like you said, two loving parents family was rich, white picket fence, and I was saying all the same things, then they wouldn't have the same affinity. So if you look at even a lot of superheroes, you look at Batman, he's a flawed person. And I think the reason I'm seen as a hero and the reason I have the fan base I have is because to a degree, I've always been a flawed person and I'm not a perfect human and I don't want mm -hmm. to be. And I think that that actually adds a lot of credibility to my character as a whole, that I've become the kind of person who believes he can add value to the world. And just like you said with Jay-Z, he changed. Right. And the biggest thing for me personally, though, truthfully, and I want the whole world to understand this, I've been forensically analyzed by multiple different federal agencies from different countries for the last 17 months, analyzing every aspect of my entire life across the last. Okay, so I think the answer is cut here. So basically, uh, you hear some keywords, affinities, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's answering uh, the question in a way that he's really confident and uh, really convinced that he's doing what he believes you know disenfranchise or whatever um no comments on that in the meantime uh he's adding values to the people who's listening to him you know uh to especially to the youth to the younger uh male uh uh audience young guys um so yeah when we asked the same similar question during an interview how have you been doing uh that you achieved today or you believe you're qualified to the things you are been doing or the position you are applying, you know, we can start it. Okay, uh, this is what I'm doing. Why I believe this is uh, adding values to the team uh, for Tate is to the fans, right? And in the meantime, our confidence because such and such situation. Uh, why people think that's that's a common because people think that's adding the same common value to their life. And for us, will be the, the hiring team. So, um. If you're looking for more examples, I mean, I have more content that I did. Uh, well, the first will be video cards right here. Why should I hire you? And I give some example uh, answers. Why should I hire you? Why should you hire me? And also, uh, in the meantime, you got to do research, research, research about your company, right? You're, you're trying to apply the job with. And also, the next one will be um, just like Owens asking why you've been who you are today as a aka your career as being an influencer okay so this questions you can find my simple answer sample answers on why this career video why you choose this career that you've been doing this one and also uh tates have been talking about a lot of achievements right so my other video was also talking about what to take what kind of things to take to achieve success what to take to be successful that's one of my 100 interview answer questions and you can check that right that's basically how i react to tate's interview with owens but this kind of reminds me of someone else um she's another controversial person uh named lana rose and i believe she also has the similar charisma or the uh the vibes right during interview how she dresses herself answers strategically and smartly and how she delivers the answer in a certain way in a certain pace in a certain tone 
So I will recommend you guys to check some of your videos that I did for Lana Rose, her interview strategies and techniques. So make sure you guys check that. Okay, man. Um, hope this really helped you guys. And if I do, please comment. If I don't, comment below as well. And I'll pick up one of one or two of your comments or questions. I'll make a video about it, right? Cool, man. This is Power Bunch of Fire Bunches. And I'm raw. Um, just like, same old, same old. If you like, subscribe, share, and like how it is. And I'll see you when I see you for the next episode. Peace out.